ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure by now you heard about the four Americans that were kidnapped by drug cartels in Mexico. Now, the story is still unfolding. Unfortunately, two of them are dead and two are still alive but injured. They claim this was a case of mistaken identity. They thought these four Americans were Haitian. These drug cartels were looking for Haitian smugglers. Now, the reason why, who knows, maybe a drug deal gone bad, who knows, but they were looking for Haitian smugglers and these four Americans were kidnapped within minutes after entering Mexico. They were, you know, you can see the bullet hole right there in the window. They shot into the vehicle. They were forced out of the SUV onto the ground. There are pictures of um, a couple of the women on the ground. And <sighs> I wish the outcome was not this. And it's a shame they didn't know the right people to target. And these Americans got caught up in it. So this is truly a sad story. And I'm going to show you their picture in a minute. Well, you know, I know people are talking about getting passports and travel, but don't travel and be naive at the same time. You know, I lived in Germany for a while. And I can tell you about an incident that happened, not to me, but to a Black family that lived across the street. Where I lived, there were all kinds of um, Americans. We were in a suburb and we were in a place called Ansbach, West Germany. In fact, there was a terrorist attack there a few years ago. And we were wondering why these folks got targeted, but there were plenty of other Black men and women. There were um, white people. There were um, a couple of people from, you know, the islands, Puerto Rico, Dominican. We were all together in this little community. And I remember there was a couple that we became good friends with right across the street. And for some reason, they were getting targeted. The N-word was getting written on their house. Um, they were getting things thrown through their window. I mean, it was all kinds of stuff happening and we couldn't understand. And we were like, okay, well, there's a lot of people around here of different backgrounds and races, but they were the only ones getting targeted. So they also had a home in the U.S. and they got word that their house got broken into in the U.S. So he decided to fly over to um, lock up the house and get whatever remaining stuff out and put it in storage. Well, they had two girls. She called me about three in the morning scared out of her mind. She said, can you meet me outside? They're trying to break in. I said, okay. So I just kind of stood outside and she ran. It was this big grassy field um, that kind of was like in the middle. It was a road on one side, a road on the other side, and it was a big grassy field in the middle. And she ran out the house with her two girls and I took them into my house and they just ended up staying with us until he returned. But it went, when he returned shortly after that, they finally got out of there and went to another location to live. And, and once they did that, nobody was bothering them anymore. But you got to be prepared for anything. You can't assume everybody is going to be okay when you go and travel. Make sure you study the demographics. Make sure you study the crime. 
in those areas in foreign countries that you're going to. Make sure you know what the climate is like. You know, is there a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of racism in foreign countries too. So you can't make the assumption that you're not going to encounter that. Now, we did pretty well over there. We didn't have a lot of issues with racism from the German people, you know, but I remember they did. The people across the street that we were friends with, they had a lot of problems. So just be careful. So let me get back into this story. But before I do that, I'm going to um, show you some of the pictures that the family posted of, um, it's like two of the four people that were in this white SUV. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now, so far we know two have been murdered and two are still living. Now, this is one of the women that was in that SUV and she's Latavia Tay McGee. I have, this is her picture, her family posted and they said that she traveled from South Carolina to Mexico to have plastic surgery done. I, I don't see where this woman needed plastic surgery, but, you know, I think sometimes we need to stop getting so preoccupied and hung up on all the wrong things. So anyway, um, that's why she was traveling, this poor woman. I, I don't know whether she is one of the deceased or not until they um, come out with more information. But for now, um, it's so unfortunate. So unfortunate. All right, so this is one of the victims. I'm going to show you her cousin that was also in the car. Okay, so this was her cousin that went on the trip with her. His name was Saeed Woodard, okay? And he was also in the vehicle with her and also one of the people that was kidnapped. Don't know whether he survived or not, but the family was able to post his picture. Now, there was another individual named Zendel Brown, and there was another person by the name of Eric James Williams that was also, so that was the four that were in the vehicle in Mexico. So they said on Friday, there was an appointment for uh, McGee and she called to say she was 15 minutes away from the doctor's office. The Americans shortly, they said it happened minutes after they got across the Mexican border. And they said the Americans were taken after getting caught in the middle of a confrontation between groups, according to the Mexico president, who told reporters on Monday that they crossed the border to buy medicines. And that's not unusual in Mexico. And, and this is the reason why, and I've known this for many years, and I'm sure many of you have too. Prescription drugs are outrageous in the U.S. It is not unusual for people to go across the border for prescription drugs in Mexico or up in Canada. In fact, there were groups here in my state that would rent a bus and once a month they would go up to Canada to get their prescription filled. You know, especially if you got a drug or some drugs that are not covered under your plan, it, it, you'll find it cheaper going across the border. And see, people would not do this if America was not price gouging everything. Because you price gouge so many things, people are trying to look for affordable ways to have their medicine. So I have heard of people doing this for many decades, just crossing the border to get 
meds. So this is still a developing story at this point, but I wanted y'all to see um, the folks that got caught up in some mess going across in the Mexico border. And like I said, I'm not slamming travel, please travel, but also travel with caution. That's all I'm saying. I know what it's like overseas. When I was overseas, there was also an issue over in Singapore. There were some Americans that went to Singapore. And in Singapore, if you get caught with drugs or caught dealing drugs, or you're a drug addict, they hang you. They have public hangings. And a couple of Americans went over there and got caught up in that. And they got hung. See, when you go in other lands, you better know what the laws are. Getting a passport and running around, that's only a small part of it. The other part of it, you better know how those folks feel. Everybody is not welcoming Americans everywhere. You know, so be careful. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. You It's wonderful if you had good experiences traveling. Look, when I was over in Germany, I was astonished by quite a few things, but the experience actually was not bad at that time. I don't know what it would be like now, but it really was not bad. And everybody that we lived around were either in the military or they were over there for contract work. They were able to get a pretty sizable contract. And that's why we were there, you know? And once the job was done, we came back to the country. That's it, you know? So it was a bunch of contractors and military people. We were all Americans. We were living in this small, um, area around each other. And it was, uh, it was like a suburb, it was a suburb and there were a lot of stores and shops around and you could go on the economy. And we met a lot of nice people over there mm -hmm. and we saw people that were poor. We saw some people that had more, you know, it, it's the same way over here. You see some homeless people and then you see some people that are not homeless. It was the same way over there. But homelessness, I can honestly say, was not as bad in Germany as it was, as it still is over here in America. It is far worse in America, for real. And you definitely want to make sure you have all your contacts in place just in case something happens and you need help getting out of a foreign country. You want to make sure you do that as well. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.